Operation Spring Optimization video series. I'm Nate Jansen. And I'm Jeff Buick. And in this series, we're first out here at our plot near Mitchell, South Dakota, where we have four different sections where we're trying out a lot of different things uh, that really have practicality in the farming operation uh, that you have today, but also taking a look at some of the options, some of the features, some of the adjustments uh, that are available on the equipment today and the effect that they can have in your operation. So some of the first things that we want to take a look at is when we first go to the field, right Nate? Yep, absolutely. There's a lot of settings adjustments between our meters on planters and tillage setup, guidance lines, a whole host of things. So we want to really take away the confusion and try and get you down to a lot of the information that's really important to your operation. So we've got a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and take a quick look. Hi, my name's Zachary Luaji. Precision A consultant with CMB Operations, covering our Laverne, Edgerton, and Pipestone locations. And today I'll be talking to you about the new Starfire 6000 integrated receiver. The Starfire 6000 integrated receiver is the new standard in John Deere Precision Egg technology and comes in base on most new equipment. It's designed to have a turnkey experience with the offsets entered into the machine display and the TCM calibration already completed from factory. This allows the operator to save time throughout the season by not having to manually calibrate the TCM and manually enter in the measurements when moving the receiver from machine to machine like we typically do in the past. This also helps ensure consistency, accuracy, and repeatability throughout the growing season. Another great benefit of the new 6000 integrated receiver is the upgraded Ethernet connectivity, which brings software updates to under four minutes while remaining in the cab. Over-the-air updates are now 85% faster with the new 6000 receiver because of this upgraded connectivity. Another upgrade is the new and improved antenna, which helps to reduce multipathing and reduces SF3 polling time by 33%. This allows the operator to be more productive and get the job done quicker. When discussing the topic of RTK, new machines with the 6000 integrated receiver have an updated radio mounting location that is integrated into the roof of the cab. The new mounting location and integrated receiver maintain the same compatibility with RTK radios, which includes the 450 and 900 megahertz radios. The Starfire 6000 integrated receiver is compatible with a wide variety of John Deere displays, including the new Generation 4 displays, the 1800 displays, 2630s, as well as GS3 command centers. One thing I want to mention is just like our integrated command center displays, once an activation is put onto a 6000 integrated receiver, it can no longer be transferred off and put onto another receiver. So that means I'm able to take an activation from a universal Starfire 6000 receiver today and transfer it onto my new integrated receiver on my new machine, but once that process is finished, I am no longer able to transfer it off. This is important to keep in mind because if I have invested money into activations on my receivers today, once I move those activations onto my new integrated receiver, I am no longer able to transfer them to a different receiver like I have done in the past. Today we talked about the new Starfire 6000 integrated receiver and the many benefits it brings to an operator, including not having to manually enter in receiver measurements or having to do the TCM calibration, as well as not having to track the activations that are on which receiver. Thank you for watching today's video. I'm Zachary Luaji, Precision A Consultant with CMB Operations, committed to being your John Deere dealer of choice. Hi, I'm Seth Horseman, Precision A Consultant with South Dakota South Stores, Parkson, Mitchell, Freeman, and Corsica. And today I'll be talking about mobile row unit runoff with the Exact Emerge Planner and the 8R tractor. So let's start out. We're going to get connected to the wireless data server with the iPad. And we'll start out in the tractor. So first what we'll have to do is get connected to our wireless data server, which on the tractor, you're going to go to your ISOBUS VT, your menu button, and down on the bottom you see your wireless data server. Once you have your password set up and the network wireless name, then we can connect to it on our iPad. So we'll go to our settings, we'll go to our Wi-Fi, and you can see I'm already selected to my wireless data server. It's already in there. So once you are selected, it does show a no internet connection. Now this is not a Wi-Fi connected planner, but it is a wireless signal from the planner wireless data server to the iPad. Once we're in here, we're gonna go to our Planner Plus app down here on the bottom. Now you've probably heard of our Planner Plus app. Um, it's new. They used to be called our maintenance apps, so they had them for planners and balers and everything else. So now in the Equipment Plus app, you can just have new equipment. So you can add everything in here. So if you already have your planner set up, which we already do, on the bottom of the page, you see this plus button. You can add them. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our DB60. It does not replace the operator's manual, as you can see. 
you have different checklists. Uh, if you want to look at the planners, things like that, it tells you anything as far as maintenance and what you need to do. Seedstar setup has run pages and summaries, so it gives you kind of a tutorial of what's going on in the planner at that time. So let's start the tractor. So once we hit our tools button, we'll see row unit runoff. Now it gives us a checklist of what we need to do. So the first one is connect your planner to Wi-Fi, which we've done that, connecting from the wireless data server on the planner to the iPad. Next, we'll have to have your planner, getting your planner ready. EPG needs to be turned on. So with that, it's PTO operated. So we will turn our PTO on. And once it's on, then we can turn our EPG on. And now we are operating. In newer 8R tractors, you will need to turn the remote on to get out of the seat, otherwise it will shut off. So we will turn that on, so now we can get out of the seat while the PTO is running. So next, now that we have our planner ready, it will have to allow the control from the in-cab display. So on the display here, if you go to your tools, on the planner, the runoff procedures. Now you can do the row unit runoff from in the cab, or if we hit this little button to the side to send it to our iPad, it's saying that we're sending it over. Now, we have control on the iPad, so we can do it from the iPad, and when you want to disconnect it, you can just disconnect. So now, let's go to the back of the planner, and we'll finish doing the mobile row unit runoff. So once we have the everything set up here from the wireless data server, and we have the in-cab display put over to our iPad, one thing to note, it does say that our vacuums are not set up. Don't worry about that. Um, for right now, we're not going to have them running, but if you're doing this on your farm, you probably will have that set up. So let's continue. So here, we're going to run row one. We're going to run 30,000 at five miles an hour. If you swipe to start, you can actually hear the row unit running, and you can stop it. So once you stop it, we can change that population number in our speed. So let's change it to 60,000. And let's put our speed back up to about 10 miles an hour. So now you'll hear the row unit running quite a bit faster. So once the test is going on, you can watch your skips and multiples, your singulation and your actual population. It will all change um, if we actually had vacuum. So that's how you would do the mobile row unit runoff. And you can stop it at any time. And if you want to change anything, if you want to, row to go to row seven and do the same test, now you can hear row seven running in the background. So that's how you run mobile row unit runoff uh, with an exact Emerge planner. So we went in the cab, we had it all set up, we connected to the wireless data server on the iPad, we put the remote on so we can control it from our iPad outside the cab, and we came out and showed you exactly how to run it um, and what to check for and things to look. Uh, with that, thanks for watching. I'm Seth Horseman, Precision Ag Consultant for the South Dakota Style Stores of Mitchell, Freeman, Parkson, and Corsica. Hello, and welcome to the John Deere Operations Center with Chris Seifert. That's me. There are five different segments we'll be discussing in the Operations Center. First, starting with the map. All right, now we are into the John Deere Operations Center. We immediately go into the Operations Center map page. So I select that map page, and it pulls up all of my equipment, my fields, everything that I have in that Operations Center account. On the left-hand side, just for navigation, we can go into our equipment here. So that would be your tractors, your planters, any implements, uh, sprayers, combines, or anything that would be in that operation center. We can also select our fields over here on the left-hand side and be able to go through all of our fields that we've got. Before we get into that, though, I'm going to be going over to the right-hand side here where we have our map settings. I'm gonna select that gear icon on the right hand side and we've got a few different map layers that we can toggle on or toggle off. If we didn't wanna see any of our equipment show up that we've got on a JD Link terminal, I can toggle that off. If I wanted to toggle that back on, we can toggle that back on. If we wanted to see our location history 
of that tractor to see where it may have gone throughout the day or anything like that. I can select the specific day and we will be able to see what the path was that it took throughout that day and where it all traveled to and go back out of that. I can open up the fields here. Uh, if I didn't want to have my last application showing up for my field, so I've got this legend down here in the bottom left. If I wanted it just to show up with the pictures of the field, I can just deselect that and that legend goes away. Now if I wanted to redo that, I can go back into that and it will show what our coverage was in that specific field based on what was last uploaded to your operation center. Now one last thing I wanted to go over here on the map layers portion is the weather tab. So if I select the weather tab, it will actually give us live radar of our weather that is around the area. So I hit that play button and now I can see a live updated radar of that time and of your area that's covered in your operation center. Once I go into that gear icon and toggle that back off, it will go away. All right, I can X, X back out of that. If I wanted to see this map with all of the roads and everything like that, we can select it that way. Otherwise, we can go into our satellite, and we can toggle that on, and instead of a map, it will give us that satellite image, which I'm on satellite right now. If I wanted to just go back to the map, I can select that, and it will give me an outline of all of the roads and everything that are around that area. So now I can see in Pipestone, I've got a few different tractors that are showing up on there. I can zoom back out, now I'm done with that right hand portion here. We can get further into our equipment and our fields. So I open up my equipment tab over here on the left hand side and we've got all of our equipment that I have already added into our operation center account. Let's say I didn't like how this was showing everything based on alphabetical order or on numbers. I can actually go into this gear equipment preferences icon and I can change it to grouping my equipment by the equipment type. So now, instead of having it all arranged in alphabetical order, I can say I want to go and take a look at my tractors. I select that tractor drop down. Now it's going to list all of my tractors that I have in my equipment. If I wanted to take a look at my corn head that I've got in here, I can hit that drop down and I can see that we've got corn head. Now let's say I wanted to ch change that back to being in alphabetical order. I can uncheck that and go back to the alphabetical order or numerical order. If you have a JD Link capable tractor that has a 4G MTG in it, we can select that tractor from there and it will actually pop up with this informational screen here. It'll tell me what my fuel level is, what my location is based off of when it last called in, and it will also show the area that I traveled in that last amount of time. We have an overall list here that gives us our serial number of our tractor and we can see our heading of last travel and what our speed was there. We've got a couple different icons on the bottom as well. On the left hand side we have our details page so if we go into the details of this 9470R we can then pull up all of this information that is for this tractor. We'll be able to see what our tractor's name is, what the serial number is, who owns it, or who, whose operation center account it is under. I can also see the current hours as of the last call in time. I can also see what the terminal is that is in there, or your MTG. This is what allows us to have this communication with your operation center to be able to send up fuel usage data, be able to do access plus RDA sessions so that from a support standpoint, we are able to remote into your display and help you through issues to resolve them over the phone. It can also allow you to wirelessly send data back and forth to and from the operation center to your MTG and then into your display one thing that I wanted to point out here is that the type of MTG that is in this tractor is a MTG 4G LTE. So basically it is a 4G MTG that receives 4G signal from the cellular towers. Just like your cell phones, if you are in a 3G area, you would have a 3G signal. 
Therefore, coming up here in December 31st of 2021, we will no longer be able to receive the signal that is broadcasted from the cell phone companies to be able to communicate with a 3G MTG. So, in order to continue to be able to receive this service, you need to upgrade to a 4G and get that installed into your tractor, combine, or other machine that you are working with. On the right hand side here, we also have a display serial number and what our software version is on here. If you have a 2630 plugged in to the corner post and an ethernet cable plugging into the back of that 2630 display, it'll also show up on that right hand side here with that software version number and that serial number of the display. We can also see what kind of subscriptions we've got for this MTG. We can see that this one specifically has access plus RDA, which will allow us to be able to see the location of that tractor. So if you were to break down in the field, our technicians would be able to remote to your operation center account and be able to try and help you through the issue over the phone or on their computer. If they're not able to resolve that, they're also able to pull it up in their operation center app and be able to get step-by-step -step directions through their mapping app on their phone to be able to get them out to your location to help lower your downtime and continue to increase your efficiency. We can also see that this MTG has a Connect upgrade subscription on it. JD Link Connect allows you to wirelessly transfer data to and from the operation center rather than having to put it on a USB stick or using a mobile data transfer stick you're able to automatically send that data up to your operation center account in real time using a Gen 4 display with a MTG with Connect subscription. With a Gen 4 4600 or 4640 display, it is pushing this data up every five to 30 seconds, depending upon what software version you have on that display. If you are using a John Deere 2630 display, every time you change the field name in your display, it will signify that it needs to push that data up to your operation center account and be able to continue to grow and get that data processed in your op center account for you to be able to view and analyze this information. On the bottom here, we've also got our tools here. So for this specific tractor, we're able to go into machine analyzer, our JD Link information and maintenance manager. If we created a maintenance plan for you, you are able to go in there and change whether or not you have done that maintenance. Let's say you did an oil change or anything like that. Um, you're able to change that information in this maintenance, maintenance manager button. So we've gone over the general portion of this details page. We can now go into the alerts. So if I select my alerts, I'm able to see all of the information of what alerts we have been having, what errors we've been having within the tractor. So we can see that this specific one did not have a TCM or train compensation module calibrated in their John Deere Starfire receiver. Therefore, all they would have to do in order to be able to continue to auto track is go in and perform a TCM calibration and they will be able to optimize that performance. If there are yellow codes, that will show a code having a higher likelihood of downtime. So we would be able to take a look at this. It could cause issues within the tractor itself. Therefore, if you were to see this code in the tractor or in the, in the operation center account, you could reach out to your operator and make sure that they are maybe not riding the transmission or be able to park it, cycle the power, and hopefully bring that back to full recovery. Another section on the left-hand side here is the remote display access segment. This is where we would go from the John Deere Operation Center to be able to remote into your display if you give us the permission to do so on that 2630 display. Um, if I were to select this view display, it will call in. It will let you guys know in the tractor that we are trying to remote in. And as soon as you select that you are going to allow that 2630 to be viewed, then we can go through and try and run through some diagnostics over the phone to be able to help you out. On a 4600, it will immediately go into your display and you are able to then help us to be more efficient in being able to resolve that issue for you in the field remotely. The next segment over here is the send file data. So if we select that send file, we can send a setup file if we had a boundary specifically for a display or a field <clears throat> that we wanted to send out there. 
we would be able to select that. If we had prescriptions, such as a variable rate prescription, we would be able to select that and be able to send that directly out to the tractor wirelessly as well. Another thing on the left-hand side here is the offsets. So our measurements that are on our tractor and our receiver, we are able to edit through this offsets segment over here in the details page. So I can go in, I can select which offsets we've got and hit this edit button. Now that I've hit the edit button, we're able to change what our connection type is that we are going to be utilizing. We can say which steering axle location is which. So like on a 9RX, the non-steering axle would actually be the front axle. So that would be where it would be being measured based off of and where the GPS location is. Typically they are on the center. So we can just change that over to center. And now it's going to have a zero inch offset put to that receiver. Next we can go in here and we can change out our different offsets. So from the rear non-steering axle to the receiver, uh, we can change what that number is. So let's say we've got 100 inches in that. Now I can go in here and I can see, okay, what's my connection offset? So from my non-steering axle to my connection point, <clears throat> I'll just put that in as, uh, let's, let's do 15 inches. Now my GPS height, I'm gonna put that in as 121 inches. <clears throat> it's always very important to get these measurements correct so that the TCM will be correct when you are going across the field. Also, it's extremely important for your implements for like section control or anything that you might be utilizing on that end. Now I can go in here and I can hit save and you can see that it says offsets updated successfully. And now every time that I create a setup file with this tractor in it, it's going to send out these measurements straight from your operation center to the display. One new thing that was brought into the John Deere operation details page is this all machine data icon. Once again, if you have a JD Link capable machine, I can go into this all machine data and it will show me my utilization rates for all of this different information here. So we can change our date range. So let's say we wanted to do a rolling seven day or maybe we wanted to change it to this year, the last month, this month, or last week. We can also do a custom one so that we could be able to figure out, okay, one operator is running at this time, one operator is running at the other time. And then we can compare the two operators to see who is running more efficiently. For this example, we'll just be doing a rolling seven days. We can see what our machine name and our machine serial number are, and when the last time it was called in and last known engine hours that were on that tractor. We can also see what our utilization was for AutoTrack. So if we were actually using AutoTrack in the field or if we were being inefficient and not using our AutoTrack in this particular case. So we can see that we were actually, while we were working, we were doing work, maybe we were out planting or tilling, we actually had AutoTrack turned off for 11 hours versus when it was actually turned on, it was at 8.66 hours. So we know that only less than half of the time were we actually using auto track while we were doing that particular operation. So maybe that signifies that we might need to go in and we, we need to do a little bit more training in the cab of, of a, one of our employees to be able to make sure that they know how to use auto track so that they're not being inefficient when they're going across the field. We can also scroll down and see what our different system voltages are, whether or not we are using Efficiency Manager. We can see that in this particular case, we actually were using Efficiency Manager for the entire time. It was set up on a manual Efficiency Manager setup. So we can see that it's actually utilizing that. There's a lot of really good information in here, such as average fuel rate, uh, average def consumption. All of that information is actually right in here under the Operation Center details page for that machine. So we can export that right up here in the top hand right. So if we select that, we can export that as a PDF so that when we would be able to, <clears throat> when we wanted to take a look at this on a sheet of paper, we could do that right there. We can export that and then open it up and print it off. So that concludes the details portion of the equipment.
We can also go straight into a remote display access session through here. We can send data or send files to the equipment right here as well. And on the right hand side, we could also get directions out to where that tractor is. So that concludes the equipment portion. Now I can move into the fields. So I select the fields and we can see on the left hand side here, we've got different outlines of fields, but there are a couple that maybe don't have an outline on it. The reason behind that is that the ones that actually do have a specific shape to them, like this one, has an active boundary around it. Whereas ones that are missing it, we can see do not have an active boundary on it. So I will be discussing active boundaries later in the setup portion, but for now, I will just point that out and make sure that you're aware of what's going on there. We can also see that we've got a few different colors here. So we've got orange, we've got blue, and we've got green. If we take a look at our legend over here on the bottom left hand side of the screen, we can see that the green correlates with seeding, the blue correlates with application, and the orange correlates with harvest. So this is the last operation data that was brought into this operation center account based on this specific field. Maybe you're still missing your harvest data from this last year, and we can go in here and we can see, okay, maybe every single field in here shows up with orange, so showing that that has been harvested, but there's only one that still shows up with blue. So that means that the harvest data has not been brought into that operation center account yet. So we can go out and do a manual pull or a manual push of that data to the op center. Let's say I brought in a prescription, uh, a variable rate prescription into a field. I can actually go in here and we can assign it to this, to this field to be able to change that later in the Agrian prescription creator, which I will cover at, cover at a later time. We can see that we've got a few different prescriptions already in here, but let's say I wanted to assign a new one. I can hit add prescription. We can say create new or from the operations center. If we've already added that in the files page, we can go from the operations center and we can select that and go through. If not, we can create it in this operations center account as well right here. If you've got a couple different client farm field names that are maybe the same one, um, that are actually the same field, we can go in here and we can merge this field with a different, different field <clears throat> that has a boundary around it. So I would be able to select that other field and then we can merge it and it will actually bring together all of the data, all of the guidance lines and the boundaries and everything that we've got in this field. So if you had done that and you wanted to unmerge that, maybe we accidentally did the wrong field, we can go back to this unmerge here and it will list that, that field that we would want to unmerge that with. So that's how you would go about that. On the top side here, we can also go into a couple different features that I will be covering later on as well. So I X out of that, and now we are done with the John Deere Operations Center map. I hope you found this informative. If you have any more questions, please reach out to your local CNB operations store or reach out to the CNB Support Center. Again, my name is Chris Seifert with CNB Operations, and we are committed to being your dealer of choice. Compared to other John Deere dealerships, here at CNB Operations, we offer a unique solution to answer the quick questions related to John Deere Precision Ag Technologies through our very own CNB Precision Ag Support Center. We understand for many of you that you don't sit in front of a green star display every day of the year like we do. Our trained staff is focused on your operations uptime related to precision ag technology and we have multiple resources at our fingertips to answer your questions no matter if you are in the cab, at your desk, or on your mobile device. We are ready to serve you. Pay as you go by calling in when you need assistance or prepay for unlimited phone support during normal operational hours. Visit any one of our CMB operations locations to get signed up or contact us here at the Support Center at 507-200-3060. For more information, visit us in the store or online at deerequipment.com.